Hi, and welcome to your Urban Connection. Remember, this is the channel that is often imitated, but is never, ever duplicated. Now, I want to uh, enter the new year. This is our first show of the new year. And the first thing I want to do is give you a little update on a story that we did in mid-December about a 10-year-old child in Mississippi, Senatobia, Mississippi, that was arrested for urinating in public. And as I told you during that broadcast, that law that was on the books was never intended for someone the age of 10. So I'm happy tonight to say to you that in Senatobia, Mississippi, the police officer that ordered that child to be arrested is no longer with the department, as he should not be. The chief of police in that city stated that the officers involved in that situation, first of all, ignored and violated department training. They also ignored and violated department policies. In addition to the one officer who was terminated, several other officers who were involved also received discipline. And at this point, I can't tell you what the extent of that discipline was. But to know that the officer that ordered that arrest is no longer with the department says a lot about what the department and I hope the prosecutor who never should have brought the charges have recognized and realized their mistake. Okay? Now, I want to get on with uh, another issue, ladies and gentlemen. I have done, uh, I think in the first part of December, I did a story on the USD 259 school district. And I told you guys at that time that USD 259, being one of the largest school district in the state of Kansas, had a lot of shortcomings. Now, to be sure and to be honest, what I was talking about was bullying. And bullying, as I described at that time, is one of the largest problems of school teachers across the country are concerned with in terms of school safety. Yeah, since that time, I have discovered that in USD 259, there are at least four cases, four complaints have been filed of bullying and sexual harassment in USD 259 just since the beginning of the current school year. Now, I want to say that I was called and asked to get involved and advocate for one of the victims. Now, the reason I was called, ladies and gentlemen, is because there appears that it's not another African American in the city that they felt comfortable calling, that they felt comfortable that that person would or could fairly advocate for them. Because you see, unfortunate as it is, more and more people are finding out 
that a lot of people will bark, but few will bite. And I, for a number of years, has gained the reputation of being a biter. I don't bark a lot, but I will bite. Okay? Keep that in mind. A lot of people will bark, but they will not bite. And the powers that be know that, and they know who they are. Okay? So now with the four cases that are in place right now, the four complaints, and the case that I was called in, the complaint was made in October. We're now in January. There's been no investigation as of today on that particular case. This case was a 10-year-old female victim who was bullied since the second week of the current school year, which started in August. And here we are in January. And no investigation. Now, since I've gotten involved, I've learned an awful lot about USD 259. And I want to share some of it with you in this show. Number one, USD 259 for the last several years has been ignoring, sweeping under the rug, and hoping that these cases of bullying will go away. Now, to be factual, we've had at least one high schooler who was bullied for long periods of time. Complaints were made by the parents of this 15-year-old female. USD 259 did nothing, showed no concern, did not take it seriously, and the young lady committed suicide. Now, this could be expected because, as I told you, in December, the leading cause of adolescent bullying, I'm sorry, adolescent suicide, is school bullying. That's the leading cause. I also told you that adolescents who are bullied are two to nine times more likely to commit suicide than those who were not bullied. So, can you imagine how shocked I was when I found out that not only had that young person committed suicide, but there was another incident at one of our elementary schools where a school teacher cyberbullied a five or six year old. That's right, a teacher cyberbullied a five or six year old student. And she later admitted it. Did she suffer any consequences? None at all. Now, this child will never, ever forget that incident, as will be the case with a 10-year-old that I have been advocating for. As a matter of fact, the 10-year-old was bullied in class with the teacher present. She was called all kinds of explicit vulgar names in front of the class and in front of the teacher. You know what the teacher said? 
just ignore it. She's not going to ignore it ever. And she's not going to forget it ever. She will carry with her that commonization the rest of her life. If she lives to be 100, she will never forget it. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, when I began to advocate, I started to do something that USD 259 was not used to. I started probing. I started asking questions. And I didn't like any of the answers that I received. So let me just tell you about what I have learned, and you should know. And that is why I'm doing this show. Number one, USD 259, in spite of all the bullying that is taking place, does not have an anti-bully policy in place. Now, this is the largest school district in the state of Kansas. Does not have a single policy in place where the parents of the perpetrators of cyberbullying and sexual harassment are to be notified. They don't have a policy. So as of the case that I'm involved in, there were four or five young males that were conducting themselves in a bullying manner. And as of this conversation, to the best of my knowledge, none of those parents have ever been involved, have never been notified. But the victim who was bullied was transferred out of the school by a USD 259 employee who's masquerading as a mediator. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you know anything about mediators, you can't be an employee of an organization <laughs> and then act as a mediator for that organization. You can't do it. And then when you consider the fact that a mediator is supposed to put the two parties, the victim and the perpetrators in the district together and bring about a compromise and a position of fairness and favorable to all involved. That didn't happen. Now, so we go on. The largest school district in the state of Kansas does not have a single person in the employment of USD 259 who has received any training on school bullying. And that is why nothing is being done on any of these four cases that are currently on the books. And that is why nothing was done with the other cases previously. They don't know how. They're not qualified. They're not trained how to deal with the single largest problem that school teachers have identified as the number one problem regarding safety in public schools. They don't have anybody on the staff. That is why, as we speak, the U.S. Department of Justice, Office of Civil Rights, has an open investigation of USD 259. As we speak, now, you didn't know that. And why did you know that? Because they don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that they don't have competent, trained people. They don't have policies and procedures. They don't have a protocol for how these complaints are supposed to be handled. And they're handling them by the seat of the pants. And basically... They've been getting away with bullying 
the parents of the victims. They've been getting away with it. And they tried that with me. But it doesn't work that way with me. You see, you can't bully me. I know right from wrong. I know when something doesn't smell right. I know when something doesn't feel right. And I know when something just isn't right. Now let's talk about this. They have, as, as and I'm going to tell you about my experience, so I'm not talking hearsay. None of this is hearsay. This is things that are factual that I know through my experience over the last two and a half months advocating for this 10-year-old female. First of all, the complaint was made to the school principal. The school principal didn't have proper training. She's a first year principal at this particular school. She didn't know how to handle it. So she brought in a principal from a different school. But he was not, he did not introduce himself as a principal. He introduced himself as a mediator. <laughs> okay, he's a principal. He's an employee of USD 259. And yet he is going to mediate for the school district. That's not right. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't smell right. It doesn't feel right. And it's not right. Plus the fact that he's not a mediator, you add to that the fact that he does not have any training on how to handle a bullying issue. And that's not right. Okay, now then we have a secondary that uh, introduces herself as a director of secondary education. Her first year on the job in USD 259 with no formal training in anti-bullying. Now remember, they don't have an anti-bullying policy. So she's involved as the one to deal with this issue. She has no solutions. She has no answers. I've had three meetings with her. I've not gotten a single answer yet to my satisfaction. She's incompetent. She's disrespectful to myself and the parent that I was advocating for. She was rude to the parent that I was advocating for. And she has no place, no business being in that position. Now, yeah. so now we've gone to the principal from the principal who I met with, and she turned out to be a liar. The principal and the secondary, secondary elementary director whom I met with on three occasions. And every time I meet with him, with her, she's been involved. It's always escalated up the chain. She has no knowledge of anything. In a meeting with the parents of the victim, myself and one of my assistants who I don't, I don't have permission to reveal her name. At the end of the meeting with the secondary director of education and one of the other administrators from the school, the question was asked, so where do we go from here? This was asked to secondary director of education. Her answer to that question was, I don't know. I'll have to talk to some people. One of the parents asked, who are you going to talk to? She said, well, I don't know. And at that point, I said, 
basically you're talking about a conversation. We're asking for an investigation to which she had no response, no reply. At the conclusion of that meeting, the parent received a call two days later to meet with another person who says, I handle this. I'm an investigator. One, and of course the parent called me, told me about the meeting, said, fine, I'll be there. The first question I asked this person who identified themselves as an investigator, do you have a team of investigators that you work with? The answer was no. So I began to get the feeling here, ladies and gentlemen, that now we've talked to, and when I say we, I'm talking to myself and the uh, mother, the parent of the victim. We've talked to four different people in four different positions, all of whom said they handle bullying issues. And we've not met anybody yet that has shown they were competent, had any training in how to deal with bullying and sexual harassment and investigations. So now I'm beginning to get suspicious that there is nobody in USD 259 that has any training in dealing with effectively and efficiently anti-bullying, sexual harassment. They don't have it. They don't have it. Now this is the largest school district in the state of Kansas. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm about to come to the conclusion that it is probably one of the most unsafe school districts in the state to have your child enrolled in. Because they can't provide you and they cannot assure you any safety for your child, your school-aged child. And I want to tell you, it's just a matter of time before one or two things, or maybe both, happen. One is, we will have another suicide victim on our hands because of the inactivity and the unconcern of school bullying in USD 259 by school administrators. And probably more likely than not, once that happens, the second thing will occur. You would have a lawsuit on your hands. And you and I as taxpayers will be asked to dole out our hard-earned money to pay off relatives of a victim of bullying in USC 259. Now, that's not to say that there won't be lawsuits before that happens. Okay? But I'm telling you folks that if you think that your child is being protected by USD 259 officials, you're sadly mistaken. You're sadly mistaken. And if you have a child that is enrolled in USD 259, you had better do everything within your power to make sure, to make sure that your child is in a safe environment from the time you drop them off or the school bus drops them off until the time you or the school bus picks him up. Or otherwise, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, that something bad is going to take place. Now, USD 259 
I'm going to tell you what should happen, in my opinion, based on what I have seen. First of all, some heads should roll. You've got people in places that are not qualified for the positions they hold. you got people in place that don't have any training. So you really cannot expect anything better because they don't know what to do. They've not been trained what to do. They don't know what the procedure is. They don't know what the protocol is because there is no protocol. They think the solution, and this has happened more than once, I found out that the solution to the problem is to transfer the victim out of the school while the perpetrators receive no consequences the parents of the perpetrators are never notified. And all they do is once that victim is out of that school, they turn their targets on another victim who might be your daughter or might be your son or your granddaughter or grandson or sister or brother or whatever. But the solution can never be an adequate solution to not have perpetrators face some kind of consequences when they are perpetrators of bullying other students who are there to try to learn and to try to get a good education. And yet they have to be traumatized by some young kids 9, 10, 12, 11, 12 years old. Who the hell is running the schools? It sounds like to me, the 10-year-olds are, the 11-year-olds are, the 12-year-olds are. Well, that's not good enough. That's not satisfactory. That's not the way a school district is supposed to be run. That's not the way in the manner in which our tax dollars are supposed to be utilized. We're supposed to have, a, I'm talking about parents of students in US 259 are supposed to have competent, trained teachers and administrators that know how to handle bullying by unruly students who have too much time on their hands to make trouble for other students. Anything less is unacceptable. And when you've got a whole school district, the largest school district in the state does not have competent, trained, educated, experienced teachers and administrators in place, heads should roll just like in any other industry. You have qualified people that can do their job and do their job efficiently and effectively and competently. And if they can't do it, you find someone else that does. It's as simple as that. This Situation at USG 259 is out of control. It is bullying is of little concern to the teachers, to the principals, and to the administrators in USG 259. It's of no concern. They're not addressing these issues. Not adequately, not as satisfactorily, not fairly, and not competently. And they cannot because the people that are in charge have titles but nothing else to offer. They're not competent to deal with these issues. 
It's just a matter of time before something tragic happens to one of your little Johnnies or Marys or Judy's or Billy's at the hands of a or some bullies. It's happening all across the country. Why should USD 259 be any different? But at least some of the districts in other areas have adequate anti-bullying, anti-sexual harassment policies on the books. They have protocols as to how to handle and how to deal with bullying. They have people that have been trained. They know what to look for. They know what to do. They know how to handle these situations fairly. USD 259 has none of that. There's time out for that. So you parents, you got to learn. If you cannot advocate and stand up to those bullies in the administration, you better find out. Maybe you might need to talk to a lawyer, but you certainly need to talk to an advocate because they're going to bully you around. They're going to push you aside. They're not going to show any concern for you because, after all, it's not their children, and they don't care. They've gotten the money from the government for your child's enrollment, and once they have that in hand, that's it. That's not good enough. You should not accept that. So, I want to tell you, nobody wants to talk about this. But I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to keep on talking about it. And I'm going to keep on asking questions. And I'm going to keep on advocating until we get it right. Okay? So, You've been warned, as I say to you all the time, this program is not for entertainment purposes. This program is to educate and inform you of what's going on. Now, what you choose to do with that information and that education is up to you. But one thing about it, you cannot say you were not told about what's going on in USD 259. And let me tell you, nobody else is going to tell you because they don't want you to know. Because they want you to think everything is hunky dory at USD 259. But let me tell you, USD 259 has been a mess for quite a little period of time. It just didn't start this year. USD 259 has been a mess for quite a while. Okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you, uh, as I told you on the uh, last show of December of 2023, this year is going to get better. I've got some nice things, some good stories, some good educational features in mind and in store for you. So do your best if you're not a subscriber to the program. Subscribe so that you won't miss a single episode of what's coming in 2024. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. It just puts you in a place where you will not miss any episodes of this show. Okay? Have a good evening, and have a good rest of 2024. See you next time.